All right, I ordered a new receiver for my Micro Q100. Some of you have seen my 2S build video of the Q100. If you haven't seen it, I'll put it in the description below. I've been using my Spectrum radio for it, and uh, this might surprise some of you guys. I have a DX6i, but I actually prefer using uh, this radio because it has three position switch. It's a lot smaller, it's lighter. And this is made by a company called Flysky. It's the FSI-6. I love this transmitter. I actually prefer it. And uh, the only problem is, up until this point, these are the only receivers that I've had available. This is the FSI-A6. Um, kind of like a Park Flyer 6 channel receiver for that. It's got long antenna leads, and it's obviously too big and bulky when weight matters. And so um, I ordered this from Hobby Mate. It came in about four days. It came in this uh, bubble envelope thing, but I was able to get it in four days because I ordered it direct from Amazon. So let's go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna do this carefully because I don't know what's inside here. Oh my goodness, this thing is a lot smaller than the pictures make it look. <laughs> Oh, this is cool. So what this receiver uses is a simple um, satellite port, um, one channel. Nice antenna, I really like that. It feels solid. We need to check and make sure that that connection is secure. Um, but I wanna show you a side-by-side -side comparison. There you go. Let's grab our scale. Let's check the weight. This one, on my scale, weighs 7.1 grams. The new FSA8S weighs 2.1. And that matters when it's on a quad that only weighs 41 grams. So. This receiver is a new product from Hobbymate. I'm excited to try it out. Let's go ahead and get it onto our Q100 to sell and see what we think of it. All right, these quads may look exactly the same. Um, but if we pull the hood off of each one, that one's stuck down a little bit. You'll start to notice a few small differences. That's because this is the one cell board that comes with the Q100. This is the new uh, F3 processor two cell board that Hobby Made is now carrying in their store. Now, I wanna say that this is uh, like 19 bucks. And the big difference is that you go from a one cell battery with this quad to a two cell battery with this quad. I'm getting about 20 to 30% longer flight times and way, way, way more power. So I'm going to be using this brand new FS A8S for FlySky uh, with this two cell build because I would much rather use my three position switch and my FlySky transmitter over my DX6i personally. So let's go ahead and switch them over. As you can see I've gone ahead and removed everything from the frame itself. We'll take that, <clears throat> set it aside. I've also removed the uh, micro FPV camera slash video transmitter. I'm also going to set that aside for the time being. <clears throat> what you're left with is the four motors that are soldered to the board. I've also desoldered my original uh, Spectrum receiver and that line was right here. And let me show you how I have soldered this up. When you look at the board, I have the ground, which is the black wire, plugged in there, uh, soldered there. I have the receiver powered to 3.3 volts. You actually need to power your receiver off of the 3.3 volt outlet because your video transmitter needs to be powered off of the 5 volt. And the reason for that is because most of these micro cameras, like the one that Hobbymate sells, are not designed to handle the 2 cell. And so you've got to get a little creative. The beautiful thing is that these receivers will work on 3.3 volts. Then finally, I use the yellow wire 
solder to my PPM connection. I've left the white line on for the time being, but I will be removing that when I go to install it. Before we connect to clean flight, I just wanted to walk you through the bind procedure on this receiver because I think if you didn't know what the bind procedure was, it could be a little confusing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my two cell battery into my 2S F3 micro brush flight controller. Next, I'm going to hold down the bind button and plug in the cable. What you'll see, I don't know if you can see that on camera, is a fast red blinking light. If it's blinking fast, then it's ready to bind. Take your radio while looking at that light, hold down your bind button, and turn on your transmitter you'll see that it went to a slow blinking light, which normally means fail-safe. And you might think that it's on fail-safe because the light right here is blinking slow. It has actually bound. That's why it went from fast flashing to slow flashing. It just doesn't send that information over via telemetry to your radio. So all you have to do is take your radio, turn it off, turn it back on, and we should have a solid light. All right, with the solid light on the receiver, radio is powered on. Clean flight is up and running. We're gonna go ahead and uh, plug in our flight controller board. I'm going to show you how to program this receiver with clean flight board is plugged in to the laptop. We're just going to go ahead and connect. I had this originally set up for Spectrum. So if we go over and test the radio, there's nothing. We need to go down to the bottom of the receiver page and switch to RxPPM, hit save. It's going to reboot. There seems to be a little clean flight glitch with the version that I'm running. I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't know if you're going to see that on yours as well, but it flashes. You'll see I'm on the receiver tab and it flashed. It did something weird. I've gotten into the habit just simply because I know that this works. I'll go down to the modes tab, load the modes page, and I will test on the modes page to see that that green dot is moving. I know that I am at least bound. Now we just need to check the channels to see how the order is. The elevator on the radio registers as roll on the flight controller. Roll is registering as throttle. Throttle is registering as pitch and the only thing that's right is yaw. My auxiliary channels are also functioning fine and those are actually correct. So I just need to rearrange the channels. That is really easy to do. I'm not going to show you in a video right now, but I'll show you how easy it is to do. All you would do is change these letters right here. I have throttle aileron elevator rudder. We're going to change that. Hit save. and you'll see it's moved. I've got my yaw correct, my throttle is wrong, my pitch is wrong. So I'm just gonna play with this order right here to get that correct. Roll, pitch, yaw, throttle, auxiliary one, auxiliary two. We need to Adjust the sub trims just a little bit, especially on pitch. We want to get that as close to 1500 as we can. Also, yaw needs to be tweaked just a little bit. Roll looks fantastic. Pitch range looks pretty good. 1985 all the way down to almost exactly 1000, 1010. So that should be fine there. Um, I don't know that I'll play with that one. We do want to get a range of a full 1000 to 2000 as much as possible. You can do that by adjusting your settings inside of your radio. Final solder setup looks like this. 
<clears throat> this is the cable for the new AES. So these are the power leads, red and black, uh, going to the camera. And then these are the three, red, black, and yellow, that will be plugged into the receiver. I'll show you, hopefully, on the board. So little. I've piggybacked the ground for the camera over the top of the ground for the receiver. The power for the receiver is at 3.3 volts. The power for the camera is at 5 volts, like I explained before. The yellow PPM is soldered to the PPM pad, which is the last pad on this little brushed micro board. So here it is, all installed on the Micro 2S build. Um, next thing to do is get it outside and test it. But I am really looking forward to flying this quad with, with this radio.